stories. Testing, testing. Are we ready? Hope you can hear us. Okay, seems like everything is fine. Okay, um, this is a scripture you all know very well, but I'm just going to read it. I just want to put your attention on this. Um, Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Okay, so in Luke chapter 8, Jesus was ministering, all right? So I'm going to start reading at verse 1 in the Amplified. Soon afterward, Jesus went on through towns and villages preaching and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. Okay, so it's now all of them walking and ministering. Okay, verse 2. And also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had been expelled, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, so that's quite a high position, and Susanna, and many others, who ministered to and provided for him and them out of their property and personal belongings. Okay, so this is now Jesus, the Son of God. All right? Ministering, going from town to town, preaching. So what happened, as he preached, those who ministered with him were also provided for by the people they ministered to. That's how Jesus operated. Okay? So Jesus had offerings. <laughs> Jesus, who is the owner of all things, received money from people that he, that he ministered to. Okay, I just want you to see that. Okay? So, then it goes on. And when a very great throng, so now that's many people, was gathering together and people from town after town kept coming to Jesus, he said in a parable. Okay, so town after town, people kept coming, bringing stuff. And in this context, he started saying the following. A sower went out to sow seed. And as he sowed, some fell along the traveled path and was trodden underfoot, and the birds of the air ate it up. And some seed fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprouted, it withered away because it had no moisture. And other seed fell in the midst of the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it off. And some seed fell in good soil and grew and yielded a crop a hundred times as great. Okay, now Jesus goes on to explain the seed is the word of God. So the word is like seed. When the word enters our ears... It falls into some kind of ground. Now the ground can be receptive or the ground cannot be that receptive. Okay? So let's, let's go on. He says, verse 10, he said to them, To you it has been given to know uh, the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others they are in parables. Now the meaning of the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those along the traveled road are the people who have heard. Then the devil comes and carries away the message out of their hearts. That they may not believe and be saved. Okay, so when, when we hear, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, Romans 10. So faith comes by hearing. But if we don't receive it when we heard it, uh, then it can be taken away before there is faith. Okay? So that's a, an attitude of heart. Verse 13. And those upon the rock are the people who, when they hear the word, receive and welcome it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of trial and temptation fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, these are people who hear. But as they go their way, they are choked and suffocated with the anxieties and cares and riches and pleasures of life. And their fruit does not ripen. But as for that seed in the good soil, these are the people who, hearing the word, hold it fast in a just, noble, virtuous, and worthy heart, and steadily bring forth fruit 
with patience. No one after he has lighted a lamp covers it with a vessel or puts it under a couch or a dining table. But he puts it on a lampstand that those who come in may see the light. All right. So there are all kinds of reasonings concerning the word. But if we simply hear it and let it touch our heart, hear it and receive it as it is, that word has great power. That word has a, the power to change us from the inside out. We are not changed by effort trying to become like Jesus. We are changed by receiving the word. The word comes and does a work inside us and changes us from the inside out. So the word of the gospel is that by the blood of Christ, he paid your, the price for everything. That means all that could be called a curse, including poverty. Everything was on the cross on Jesus Christ. Okay? So that word of forgiveness, that word of righteousness, that word of reconciliation, when we hear that word, it is spoken by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the word is one. He enters our heart and changes us. So we keep on hearing and keep on hearing and keep on hearing. Now the word says that you are, according to Romans 5 and according to Hebrews chapter 10, there's many other, others that says you are forgiven, you are made righteous, you are justified, you are holy, you are forever completely cleansed and perfected. That's what Jesus did on the cross. We don't see it in reality <laughs> yet. But that's what you are in spirit before you bear the fruit of it. But in order for the fruit to come, the word needs to be received. Okay? So, Jesus has done something for you. In spirit, he has... Thank you, Jesus. Brand new one. That doesn't like, give us problems. Is it fine now? Amen. Okay. All right. So when the word is received, it bears fruit. Okay. So Jesus, and this is something I just want to say. Jesus did the finished work on that cross. But that word needs to be believed on for it to change anything in our lives. Um, so it is not true that everyone is just saved because Jesus died on the cross. It's not that. It's not true. You need to hear and you need to believe. You need to be born again. In the same way, anything that comes from the Spirit first come to your ears and then to reality. Okay. So even, even in uh, the way God wants to prosper us, for God to prosper you, He will send you a word. He even He healed people through His word. Psalm 107 says He sent His word to heal them. Psalm 107 verse 20. Okay, so that He will first change your heart before He changes your shirt or your car. Okay? <laughs> he will first change your heart before something else happens. So the word needs to be received. Okay, so the word is not 
just a magic trick to get a Porsche. That's not what it's for. Okay? We receive him, the person. And he loves us and he wants to bless us. All right? Okay, so for you to prosper in the kingdom of God, you need to believe this thing, that God wants to prosper you and bless you. Okay? So for you, some people think that it's a blessing to be poor. It's not a blessing to be poor. Ask anyone who is poor, it's not a blessing to be poor. It's a curse. If you read in, in Deuteronomy 28, uh, it, it says, If you obey the law, you shall be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed coming in. But if you do not obey everything written in the, in the law, you shall be cursed. And then this goes from verse 15 to 68, all the curses. Many more curses than blessings. So Deuteronomy 28 is not where our blessing lies. Uh, it says, if you do all that is written in the law, then you shall be blessed. Instead of blessing, field, 2 verse 15. But if you do not do all written in the law, brrr, curses. Okay, and it says, even with all the sicknesses that's not written in this book shall cling to you. Okay, <laughs> all right. So there's a blessing coming from God from the cross. He took that curse of the law upon him. Okay? He redeemed us from the curse of the law so that we might be blessed. Okay? So we are, we are blessed with Jesus Christ. That is when we receive the word and that word gets time to grow in us, bear fruit in us, and we are changed from inside out. All right? Okay. So if, if you read, the curse part tells you poverty. The blessing part tells you Prosperity. So, if then poverty is this great blessing, why do you go to work? To get rid of this awesome, godly blessing of poverty. If sickness is from God, and God wants to teach you something through sickness, then why do you go to the doctor to get rid of this awesome, heavenly blessing of sickness? It doesn't make sense. So, that kind of thinking doesn't work in the kingdom. It doesn't work. Okay? So, God wants to prosper us so that your joy may be full. He said it in John 16. Uh, ask whatever you will so that your joy may be full and complete. Okay, so he wants to bless you. God rejoices when it goes well with his people. All right? So even Job, in the beginning, before all the stuff, Job was the richest in the East. He was righteous. Satan came and messed everything up. Job was restored by God with double with, of what he had afterwards. Okay? I just want to tell you this. God is not in it to take anything away from you. Alright? His heart is to bless you. He owns everything. He doesn't need you to feel better about himself. Okay? But why then do we give? Do we give... Uh, because God needs it? Or do we give because, wh why do we give? Do we give because God is poor? Or? Because that's kind of also a mindset. People think, oh yeah, God needs me, my money again. It's a, it's a twofold thing. God does everything through his body. On this earth, he does everything through his body. He didn't lead Egypt Ach, the, the Israelites out of Egypt. He called Moses and Moses led them out of Egypt. He didn't just open the Red Sea. Moses stretched out his hand and then God opened the Red Sea. So God uses people. And today he also uses people. God doesn't just appear to everybody and say, Hey, Jesus died for you. You are forgiven. And then, wow, and then everybody is saved. It doesn't work that way. It works this way. God calls someone and says, Go preach. And that word is received somewhere. But in order for people to preach, for practical things that they need to do, they need to leave their jobs in order to go preach so that more people can hear, so that the word can enter their hearts so that they can bear fruit. Okay? So the more people we can reach with this word, the better. Because then people can be introduced to God. Because right in the beginning, God gave 
all authority to man. He said, let them rule over the fish of the sea, birds of the everything on the earth, every creeping thing on the earth. So he gave complete authority to man in the beginning. He's not now just going to do everything without man. He works with his body. He's the king of kings. We are kings and he is our king. He came onto this earth in the body of Jesus Christ and he paid for uh, the sins of the world in a flesh body. He felt it. He came here where sin was and he took that nails in his physical hands. He felt every blow so that we can be free. He sent the prophets to this earth to speak a word on this earth. So it's not just airy fairy, fluffy, spooky God there in the clouds and he just does everything. He comes with a word. He calls someone and he sends someone with a word. When that word is received, fruit comes. Okay, so this is our connection with God. We hear the word and we believe the gospel and we experience God. So the more we hear it, the more there will be fruit on it. Okay, in order for us to hear it, someone needs to be called and sent. In order for someone to be called and sent, he had to hear it somewhere. <laughs> So I heard it because someone gave to some preacher and there was a place where I could go and I heard. And my life was transformed. Okay. So God spoke to me to go into ministry to preach so that more people can hear. Do you see how it is? So um, it's not for the preacher's own gain. If it, if it was... For my gain that people give to me, I would have stayed a lawyer. I would have made more money. <laughs> I would have just, if, I, if my heart was to only have nice cars and houses, I would have just stayed a lawyer. Okay? But in order for this word to go out, there needs to, something needs to happen. Do you get it? So even Jesus, he, he came into this world in a physical body, Jesus, the Son of God, preached the gospel of the kingdom. And he commanded us to do it in the same way in Mark chapter 16. Go into all the world. Gen Gen uh, um, not Genesis, Matthew 28. Go make disciples of all nations. Go and preach. And these signs will follow them that believe. Okay? And the immediate fruit was people came, contributed. People came, contributed. Okay, so this is now Jesus who, when they spoke about temple tax, it just said, oh, just go catch a fish and get the silver coin and pay for us both. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so he worked, he lived in a human body, and he preached with words that humans can hear. And people, humans, gave him money so that he can live on this earth. Yeah. All right? Okay, so if Jesus had people ministering to him out of their personal belongings, uh, then, it's, then it's still good. Uh, and I say this with so much detail so that, um, so that people can understand. It's not a human thing. It's something that God said. Let's, uh, I'm turning to 1 Corinthians um, 9. Um, and then I'm, I just want to still connect something where we were just now. In Luke chapter 8, those who really received, whose hearts were opened, the good soil, were the ones that came and brought. I've experienced this so much in my life. When I really just gave, it's like I just grew. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Okay? All right, so, Gerard, why do you speak so much about money? To teach people. Because God said, teach on it. So I'm not going to even preach today. Lena is preaching today. <laughs> but this is on my heart to, to, to tell you today. Okay, so it helps us to receive the word when we contribute to the preaching of the word. Okay? All right, so, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 7 says, Consider this, what soldier... At, his, at any time serves at his own expense. Who plants a vineyard and does not eat any of the fruit of it? Who tends a flock and does not partake of the milk of the flock? Do I say this only on human authority or as a man reasons? Does not the law endorse the same principle? For in the law of Moses it is written, 
you shall not muzzle an ox when it is treading out the corn. Is it only for oxen that God cares? Or does he speak certainly and entirely for our sakes? Assuredly, it's written for our sakes, because the plowman ought to plow in hope, and the thresher ought to thresh in expectation of partaking of the harvest. If we have sown the seed of spiritual good among you, is it too much if we reap from your material benefits? Okay, so the point is that for the gospel to go out for free, it, someone needs to voluntarily support it. And that's what it's about. Okay, so um, we have something new that it's, uh, that's happening. And something old. There's some buckets. That's the old. Oh. Okay. All right. We have, at long last, a debit order system. Yay. So this thing means that you, if you want to, this is really it's voluntary. Do not feel compelled at all. This is something in your heart between you and God. If you want to, you can. If you don't want to, please be free. Okay. So now, this one, this is a, this is a contract. Whereby, if you fill in this form and you say you're going to give maybe 100 rand a month or whatever, we just put it on the system and 100 rand a month goes off until you say stop it and then we stop it. Okay? Or until you say make it more, then you have to sign a new form. Okay? <laughs> so if you sign, I just want to make this clear. If you sign this, money will start going off. Okay? <laughs> but I know in the past I've struggled cancelling debit orders with people who didn't want to cancel it. If you call us, we will stop it immediately. Okay? All right, so I know this thing says how many days or whatever, but if you call us, we'll stop it. All right, yeah. If you fill this in, please just add your ID number. I didn't make a block for it. And then the, the, the smallest amount you can give is 50 rand per month, and the biggest is 15,000. So if you want to give more than 15,000, you will have to fill in more than one form. <laughs> Yeah. So if you want to take 10 forms, you know, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Why do we do this? It's just simple. It just helps us to, to see, okay, this is coming in regularly. I also sign at different ministries and this stuff goes off without me thinking, oh, I have to remember to, to give them money. So, um, so this is just a, a practical matter. But this is a, a new thing. This is the first day we have these forms here. So those who want to come take a form, you're welcome. And then um, we have all the other avenues, snap scan, and we have banking stuff and everything. Right. So uh, I just want to say something about this. It's... it's uh, the ministry is, is the body of Christ together moving to reach people. So it is all of us together moving to, for, with a common goal to bless people and to build people up and equip people and reach people. Okay? So that's what it's about. Uh, if, and, and it brings thanksgiving to God. It's a partnership. We, we walk together. We stand together. All right. So... There are the forms. There's a, if you have filled in a form, just somewhere, uh, throw it in the bucket. And or if you still do it during the service, just we'll have a bucket here for the forms. Just put it in the bucket. All right. So bless you. You're welcome to, to give.
We also have a prayer box. If you have prayer requests, wonderful things happen when you put your prayer request in this box. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to put the box on that trolley on this side. If you want to um, fill in a, just, it's just scrap paper. If you just want to write a prayer request, no one looks at it. it you, it's just an action that you, where you can give it to God. You write it up there and you put it, no one will open this box. Okay, you can put anything in there. When it's really full, we will burn it or something. So, <laughs> okay, so there's a prayer box while well, everybody is taking pens anyway. If you somewhere want to fill in a prayer request, then you can do that. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that was given. We pray for a great harvest on all the seed that was sown. Pray, Lord Jesus, for your grace to extend to every person for a breakthrough in finances by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, this bucket, I'll just put it here next to the prayer box. You can put your debit orders in there when you fold it in. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so my lovely wife will now preach the good news to us. Amen. Hello, everyone. Had it said, um, I just have to speak a bit slower because if you look at these recordings when he's preaching, the sound wave goes like this, and my recordings goes like this. <laughs> so you're allowed to tell me to slow down if I'm speaking too fast. <laughs> um, I want to speak a bit about the kingdom today and um, it's just something that God is speaking to me about and how the kingdom operates and I think sometimes we just think of the kingdom and in, it's just this fluffy idea we hear about the kingdom but what is it really, really about? So. Um, Let's start at Colossians 1. Now, if I'm saying fluffy, sometimes the words that we hear, like faith and hope and love, sometimes... It, this is something that I regularly ask God. I want, I want to understand what, what he means with, with it. Like, what does hope look like? What does love look like? You know, I, I just want to be able to grasp these, these concepts and really experience um, what, what he says when he speaks about these things. Okay, so let's start. We're going to read quite a bit. So let's start Colossians 1, verse 1. Okay, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints, the consecrated people of God and believing and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Colossae, grace to you and heart peace from God our Father. We continually give thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ as we are praying for you. For we, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus the leaning of your entire human personality on him in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom and goodness, and of the love which you have and show for all the saints, because of the hope of experiencing what is laid up for you in heaven, of this hope you heard in the past in the message of the truth of the gospel. Let's quickly just pause there. 
if I'm thinking about the kingdom, most of the time, if you, our regular way of thinking is usually not how the kingdom works. <laughs> okay, so that is why we need to hear the word of God so that our minds can be renewed. Let's say, for example, um, let's take the system of the world. The world says, and if I speak about the world, I just say the, the way that we grow up, but also um, it can refer to the law. Okay, so it is the way that, that we are programmed. So in this world, it says if you do very good, then you will receive something good. If you are bad, you will receive something bad. It's the way of the world. But with God, there's a new, let's call it a principle, a new something principle working in his kingdom. And that is, for example, the, the principle of forgiveness. <laughs> so whether you do good, if it's in your own string, you, you are forgiven. <laughs> Thank you for that. But if you do good, God says that he sees everything that we good when, when we live by faith. But then also when you do bad, the result is forgiveness. Okay, So the result is always forgiveness. It is not punishment when we do bad. So sometimes we have this expectation and this thing that, that we think how God operates. But if we, our minds are not renewed by the word, um, we will not truly experience what God has for us. For example, now, we think maybe, sure, I missed it this week. I did not read my Bible enough, or I cursed the cat, or I don't know what, what maybe your temptation or your struggle is. Maybe um, you, you struggle with anger. Um, maybe you struggle with, um, I don't know, whatever your temptation is. Your expectation from God might be punishment. You think, I wonder what is God going to do <laughs> to me. But when we hear the word, we can know that the expectation we can have from God is forgiveness. And that is always forgiveness. So our minds need to be renewed. Let's just, before, before I uh, finish in Colossians, let's just read Romans 12. It speaks about the renewal of the mind. Verse 1, it says, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God, even in the things which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. So as our minds are renewed, we start realizing how God operates, how God works in this kingdom. Um, I don't know if it has happened to you, but sometimes something bad comes over your life, and then the first thought is like, I wonder where I missed it. I wonder what I did wrong. That is still old thinking. God is, it's not the way of the kingdom. Okay, so when something bad happens, it only means that we are not perfect yet. <laughs> and that our minds need to be renewed. Things happened. Matthew 16 says, um, in this world you will have trouble. In this world, okay, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. So we are speaking about two different places, in this world and in Christ. Okay, but we're going to continue on that. Let's get back to Colossians. So we said, I'm just going to recap this form. For we have heard of your faith in Christ. I'm going to skip all of that, of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love which you have for all the saints because of the hope of experiencing what is laid up for you in heaven. I quickly want to elaborate on that faith, love, and hope. Okay, so Paul is speaking about this faith. So that is another thing working in the kingdom of God. We live by faith. The just shall live by faith. If you want to live and not only kind of survive, <laughs> 
But you truly want to experience the abundant life of Christ, your life needs to be lived by faith. That is the way of the kingdom. If you're not going to live by faith, um, you're not going to see and experience the things of, of, of the kingdom. Okay. So what is faith? For me, faith is simple action. Okay. So Jared spoke about it now in the offering. It really blessed me because God just showed me some things. Faith comes to you when you hear the word of God, when you hear the gospel. Okay. But let's quickly go to James. James speaks about faith. And I love it. When I first started reading James, I couldn't understand it at all. But now God has showed us some things. Okay. So let's see. James 1. Um, verse 21. So get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness and in a humble, gentle, modest spirit receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your heart contains the power to save your soul. Okay, so he says get rid of all the things that you're struggling with. How do you do that? By receiving the word. Now what happens when you receive the word? Faith comes to you. Okay. But then he says, but be doers of the word and not merely listeners to it, betraying yourself into deception by reasonings contrary to the, um, to the truth. For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it and being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it being not a heedless listener who forgets but an active doer he shall be blessed in his doing and his life of obedience now when he's speaking about being a doer of a word he's not saying okay as i am preaching to you today make a list of three things that you can change um, about yourself this week and then go and try to change it okay he is speaking remember Christ is the word so when we hear the word the gospel preached to us Christ himself him being the word enters our heart and it gives us a platform to know him personally so then when I leave these doors I hear him speaking to me and I do what he says. Okay. So it is not a method. I cannot tell you today. Well, I suppose I can do that, but it's not going to help you. <laughs> if I tell you today, listen, I think to be a better Christian this week, you can work on step one, two, three. And then you think, whoa. I'm going to be a doer of the word this week. This is not what he's speaking about. Okay. That is the thinking of the world. The thinking of the world of not it's not the kingdom of God, is change yourself, improve yourself, become, what is that hierarchy of Maslow? Um, what is that worst Ian? Yes, you have to uh, be, get to self-actualization, you know, be independent, be strong in yourself. Uh. <laughs> the way of the kingdom is you grow more dependent on God. And you do not depend on yourself, and you do not trust your ways, and you trust that Jesus, who lives inside of you, will live his life through you. Okay, so again, different thinking. So when he says, be a doer of the word, he says, <laughs> the word that has entered your heart, Jesus Christ himself, hear what he says to you, and do that. And then there will be many examples in the word of how it can look like. But he's not restricted to that. So he will say, lay your hands on the sick or pray for that one. Give a hug to that one. But faith can, can look like many different things. For example, there's not an example of a debit order system in <laughs> the Bible. So you cannot say, oh, I'm going to take a faith action today. Let me just see if there's a debit order faith action in here. <laughs> so that's why you need to know Jesus personally and then when he says to you give 100 rand to that guy then you follow then you you follow his voice then you are a doer of the word so now he says if you're not the doer of the word you forget who you are so it's not like if you're not the doer of the word 
sips of braai boot, another way of the kingdom. If you're not the doer of the word, it just means that you forget who you are. So you know in the week when you sit and you're thinking, oh, you're so stupid, <laughs> and you feel, you just, you don't feel good about yourself, you feel condemned about something, or you shout it at your husband or your wife and you feel stupid. But when you continue to persevere, so continue to look, continue to hear the word, and when you are active, so hearing Jesus speak to you and doing that, then these condemnation, feelings of guilt and shame, those things that paralyze us, that is easily for, for, uh, forgotten because you're in a kingdom where you can just receive the grace of Jesus, receive the love of Jesus, show the love of Jesus, and that's forgotten, okay? So you don't need to be punished for your sins again. Okay, so let's go to James 2 on this topic still. Verse 17. Okay, so it says, So also faith, if it does not have works, by itself is destitute of power. But someone will say, You have faith and I have good works. Now you show me your faith apart from any good works. If you can, and I by, by good works of obedience will show you my faith. Let's just go on, verse 20. Are you willing to be shown your foolish Fellow, that faith apart from good work is inactive and if ineffective and worthless. Okay, let me just repeat that verse. Are you willing to be shown or proof, you foolish, <laughs> unproductive, spiritually deficient fellow, that faith apart from good works is inactive and ineffective and worthless? If I say, um, I believe that the sick can be healed. I believe that the sick can be healed. But I never put my hand on a sick person to be healed. My faith is inactive and worthless. Okay. If I say, I believe God, you pray every day, God use me. Use me. I want to be a vessel for you. It is sincere. It is sincere. But then when he prompts you and he says, listen, call your auntie. She's not having a, a good day or, you know, she needs some encouragement. And you're thinking, ah, that's not the voice of God. Then your faith is inactive and worthless. So, but the good news is, <laughs> is that you don't have to feel condemned for all the times that you've missed it. I know how many times I miss it. I miss it all the time. I'm not standing up here because I get it right. <laughs> I'm, I, I just know my, my Jesus, I know my Father, and I know that every time I return to Him and just look to Him and receive love, it is so much easier than to follow His voice and to follow a prompting. And then sometimes I just forget who I am, and He prompts me and I do not follow that prompting. And I realize it's just because I forgot who I am. And then I hear the Word again, and I hear the Word I continue to you know, persevere in looking and hearing the Word. That is why it is so important to hear the word. We say it many times here. <laughs> and that's why we make the CDs. Year and year and year. So that your heart can be so filled and full of Jesus. <laughs> so that you can recognize his voice when he speaks. He lives inside of you. He says, my sheep hear my voice. So it is not a strange voice. You are maybe just confused with some other voices, but you do hear his voice. If you know Jesus, you hear his voice. There's no two ways about it. Okay. There might be some other voices active in your head also, but as you hear the word, those other voices, or oh, they fade out and his voice just become more clear. Okay, so let gets back, let's get back to Colossians again. Okay, so he said, we have heard of your faith and of your love. Okay, it doesn't seem like we're going to stick with Colossians. Now we're going to go 1 John. So just to recap, the, world, the way of this world is 
Um, you work very hard to get something. You have to perform at a very high level to get a good salary, to get a house, the, all of that. The way of the kingdom, you live by faith. <laughs> you follow the voice of the Spirit and you do that. Sometimes it's something very small, it is just something simple. I put my hand on a sick person, I don't know if she's sick, a sick person, and cancer gets healed. And we're not saying that lightly. Every week when we go out to, to the hospital, many of you have come with us, many of you have seen it just in your own lives, where you, where you minister maybe to someone at work or a friend or in the community. We go out and we see the sick healed. And I tell you, sometimes on a Thursday morning when we go out, I'm not like, yeah, we're going to heal the sick today. I'm thinking, I want to sleep a bit later. <laughs> but I get up and I put on my clothes and I come. And then miracles happen. I just put and I say, thank you, Jesus. Be healed. And I ask the person, where's your pain? No, no pain, are you sure? No, no pain. And you kind of, you get this thrill, wow, it's really working. And then we see the blind eyes open. And I'm just thinking of Herod, he prayed for a guy last week, Sunday, at Daisy View. And we were ministering there. The guy has like less than 90% vision. So it's basically just dark. He can just kind of see... Yeah, I so it's less than ten percent vision, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of just a so if he closes his good eye, he can kind of see a shade. That's what it is. And then when he prayed for him, the eye opened up. He he closed his good eye, he read all the scriptures and the things on the wall. That was really awesome. I'm just thinking, um, Monique, forgive me for sharing this. Um, I'm sure she will. It was the first time she went out with us. She's never prayed for sick people. So I demonstrated two people for, to her, and um, it was both just pains. So just pains. But both the pains went out, and it was wonderful. So I said to her, okay, it's your turn. So it comes, Tani, you know, can I pray for you? And the lady says, yeah, her ear is deaf. And she looks at me, she's like, how do I pray for that? <laughs> I'm like, just like all the other things. So I said, but before you pray, let's just test the ear. So I would stand behind and say a name, or we clicked and she could hear about half a meter. Anything further than that, she could not hear from that ear. Monique prayed for her, that ear went open. We stood like 10 meters back, said her name very softly. She said, yes, she can hear. So God is really doing these things on a weekly basis. And um, why did I share this? Faith, the kingdom. Okay. So the, the way of this world is you have to work very hard to attain something. The way of the kingdom is you take a simple, small action, just by obeying the word, and something great happens. And that can be true for your finances as well. Sometimes you just feel, God, I really need a miracle. I have just 100 rand. And God says, give that 100 rand. And you give that 100 rand. Now you have nothing. And then just miracles happen. You see just a breakthrough coming. Somebody brings groceries to your home. Somebody puts money in your bank account. We do see these things, good things happening. Okay. So the way of the kingdom is small faith action. God does something big. Okay, but let's go to, we were speaking now next about the love. I was just thinking the motivation of this world the way this world works is um, the motivation is gain and power. The motivation, if you help out someone, it's because they can give you something back, you know, under the table. The way of the world, that's the a natural way of thinking. I will give as long as you can give me. I will do you a favor, but I hope you return that favor. <laughs> you know, it is not, it's not a selfless thing. It's only when you are touched by the love of God that a life of love, a selfless life, becomes your way of doing. 2 Corinthians 5 17 say that it is the love of God that compels us. Okay. So um, let's read in 1 John 3. Just see what the verse is.
Okay, oh, no, it's 1 John 4 from verse 7. It says, Beloved. Okay, that's very important. That he's speaking to a person that know they are loved by God. So that is a person you cannot love if you have not received. If you have not received something, you cannot give it. So, Beloved. Let us love one another, for love is from God. It springs from God. And he who loves his fellow men is begotten or born of God. And he is coming progressively to know and understand God, to perceive and recognize and get a better and clearer knowledge of him. He who does not love has not become acquainted with God, for God is love. In this is love. In this the love of God was made manifest, where we are concerned, in that God sent his Son, the only begotten or unique Son, into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not with, that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God loved us so very much, we also um, ought to love one another. Now very important, no man has at any time seen God, but if we love one another, God abides in us and his love is brought to completion in us. Now if you look at Colossians 1, the verse 4 and 5, he said, we thank you for the faith and the love that you share among the saints, and he says, because of the hope of experiencing what is laid up for you in heaven. Okay. What is this hope? I'm jumping ahead of myself, but if you go to Colossians 1 verse 6, 26, it says, The mystery of which was hidden for ages and generations, but is now revealed to his holy saints, to whom God was pleased to make known how great for the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ within us among you, the hope of realizing the glory. So the, the gospel was hidden until Christ was crucified. The, then the gospel came forth and it was given um, yeah, in, its, in, its, in its fullness. So when we hear the gospel, in our spirit man we are made perfect holy, complete, totally forgiven. But that glory that has been imparted with which we are filled, we want to see it in our flesh, in our soul man. We want to experience that. So that is a hope that needs to be, a glory that needs to be manifested. But hope is something that you cannot see. Okay. So you are hoping, all of us sitting here, most, most Christians, if you ask them, um, you know what, how do they want to be? They say they want to be more like Jesus. Okay. So they have a hope inside them so that they can look more like Christ. So our hope is something that we cannot see. But now he says in Colossians, um, in 1 John 4, he says, when we love one another, God is made visible. When we love one another, we can truly know God. So, faith and love, they, are, they work, they go like this for me. Because faith requires action. Love requires action. Brothers, do not merely love each other in word, but in deed and truth and in deed. That one. <laughs> okay, so there is always an action involved. But the action, there's no method for that action. It is by hearing the word and following that. Okay, so a hope. A hope is if I'm naked, my hope is that I will be clothed. I cannot see it yet. Faith is that action just to put on my clothes. You understand? If I I'm, I'm here on a Thursday morning for before outreach. My hope is that the people in the hospital will be, will be healed. That's my hope. My motivation for going is the love that is driving me. Even though I don't feel like it, for some reason I'm still here. Yeah, there's a love that's motivating me. My faith is just putting my hand on that person and God does, does something. Okay. So the way of the world is to work hard and be paid for it. Way of the kingdom is to, 
to just hear and do. Way, the motivation of the world is, um, is power, money. <laughs> motivation is love. Um, the hope of the world is unsure. You put your money in a um, trust or a, in a what? Investment, you make an investment and it crumbles and fall. Um, the hope of Christ is a sure hope. Let me just read it for, mis not misquoting it, Romans 5 verse 5 says, Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Okay, so the hope that we receive, that gospel, that hope of glory, is a very sure hope. It has a definite outcome. We will, we will see it. Okay, so let's read on a bit. Where are we going to pick up again? Okay, let's read from verse 9. For this reason we also, from the day we heard of it, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you, asking that you may be filled with the full, deep and clear knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and in understanding and discernment of spiritual things, that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him and desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God. Okay, so if you think Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God. So the only way that you are pleasing to God is by faith. When you received Christ into your heart, that was the first day, that was the first action of faith. You said, Lord, I do not trust myself, I trust you to be my savior. Faith, God's pleased with you. He's fully pleased with you. There's nothing that you can do that will upset him. He doesn't fall off his throne. <laughs> He's just fully pleased with you. Just yesterday I was just thinking, if we could only know and look at ourselves as God look at us. Because so easily, okay, let's say, let me tell you about me this week. So I'm reading a book. It's not a spiritual book. It's a, I don't know, fantasy adventure little book. So now I'm thinking in my mind, I wonder, you know, I'm preaching Sunday, I wonder if I should rather read the Bible. So I'm thinking, <clears throat> now it's a struggle because this is a very exciting book and every new chapter, you know how books work, I wonder what happens in the next chapter. So, um, and God just showed me, he said, if I could just see him right now looking at me, he's not thinking, sis Lene, why aren't you reading Bible? He is thinking, Lene, I'm so pleased with you. <laughs> I love you. You are amazing. I, I finished the price and you accepted it. Now I'm fully pleased with you. Do you understand? You are covered by the blood of the Lamb. There's nothing that can change the way that God looks at you. But that is constantly what we do. We look at ourselves and we me measure ourselves. <laughs> are we doing, where are we on the doing good? I don't know, measure, <laughs> measurement, you know, and then you kind of, uh, you do better some days and then other days not that good. The point is your, your eyes is on yourself. But the best is, is when you're in that moment, when you're so confused between what I should do and shouldn't do and how, how do I feel about myself? And you just realize, look at Jesus, oh, he loves me. That's what it's about. He's realizing lo his love for you right in the middle when you are feeling condemned about whatever. That is the whole point. So the point is not that he gets you to read the Bible. <laughs> the point is, is that you experience his love. And when you start to experience his love for you, then things do change. And I'm not saying then I'm not going to read the book, I'm only then going to read the Bible. I'm just saying I can ex have joy and peace when, in whatever I'm doing. And then I can just return to, to the way of the kingdom. Oh, I can just hear the voice of my father and do that. And when I want to, to read my book, and I do not feel, and I'm not saying 
just give over to feelings because sometimes we feel wrong. I'm saying just this voice. He doesn't expect you. He has no expectation of you. He just wants you to receive his love, his forgiveness, his grace towards you. And then it doesn't become a right and a wrong thing of reading my Bible in the book. It is a living relationship with Jesus where sometimes you feel you want to read your book. But the next moment, you're still reading your book. You hear this prompting of the Spirit. He says, go and read that chapter. And that's actually what happened. I was still reading and God said, go. And I put down my book and I read my Bible and I started just writing things down for the day. And I could just feel him speaking to me. So that is the way of the kingdom, is hearing and doing, not trying to measure up what is the right thing and the wrong thing to do. Okay. So what pleases God? Faith. Verse 11. We pray that you may be invigorated and strengthened with all power, according to the mind of his glory, um, to exercise every kind of endurance and patience and forbearing with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints in the light. And this is actually what we are speaking about today. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have our redemption through his blood which means the forgiveness of our sins. When you are born you are in the kingdom of darkness you are in darkness. Um, it's the way of the world. You are born into sin. All men are born into sin. But then you hear a message. You are redeemed. So you are paid for. You are bought. You are ransomed with the blood of Christ. And you are transformed, actually this side, transformed from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. So you are no longer in this world. And therefore you do not operate according to these rules and regulations anymore. You have been transformed into the kingdom of the son of his love. With new laws, new rules if I can say it like that, new principles. What is the law of the kingdom of, of, of the son of his love? It's the law of the liberty of life. So why so does it just mean we are lawless now that we have been redeemed from the law? <laughs> no, it means we live under a new law where my expectation is life. Romans 8 verse 1 says, you have been, I guess not so good with quoting, let me read that. Romans 8 verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed me from the law of sin and death. So there is a law. You do good and bad. If you think of Deuteronomy 8, 28, if it is self-righteousness, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. And your sure end, the law says your sure end is sin and death this world. Christ. You receive the word. No matter what you do, right or wrong, you because you receive Jesus, what is your end result? Is life. And as you hear and receive that word, life, the glory that our expectant hope is produced and produced until we look like Christ, 2 Corinthians 3, from verse 15. So as we look, we see more of Christ. So that is the law is that when you hear, when you receive Jesus, your end is life. Okay. Now, um, the other thing I want to say about the son of his love. So now this kingdom of darkness, um, it could influence you and it, uh, uh, there's certain rules operating in this kingdom. But if you think on this side, it is the kingdom of the son of his love. And I was just thinking, if it is the kingdom of the son of his love, then it means that 
We are, those who are brought into this kingdom are sons of his love. So I am a son of his love. I am his beloved son. You are his beloved son. So the, I almost want to say the main thing operating in this kingdom is the love. Um, the forgiveness is to show you the love. <laughs> the blessings we receive is to show you the love. The whole point is love because God is love. So when we come to a full realization of who God is, when we truly understand how this kingdom works, and our mind has been renewed in every way, the result will be love. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 speaks about it. He says there's many things that will pass away. Even prophecy will pass away. But what will remain? Faith, hope, love. Okay, and the greatest of these is love. So, love, that's the point. God is love. Now, um, sometimes this kingdom, or dominion of darkness, has a bit of a, it drags a bit on us. <laughs> you feel condemned, you feel shame, or there's sickness in your life that comes, circumstances happen. And you kind of, for a moment, you get confused and you forget who you are, and you're thinking, why is this happening to me? Or you have very difficult questions that I cannot answer. But all that needs to happen is, is that you just need to realize, but I'm not in that kingdom. I'm not of that world. And when we realize that we are not of that world anymore, it is, and we, we reign, we actually do something, we live by faith. You take that simple faith action. Sometimes it is just speaking a word. So, for example, I have a toe in pain in my a toe in my pain, ha, <laughs> a pain in my toe, and you say, "Pain go." Oh, there the pain goes. It is a simple faith action. When you realize, oh, but I'm in this kingdom, it operates with different rules than that kingdom. The effect of that kingdom, it cannot have an effect on you anymore. You understand? So. It is amazing. Let me give you this example. When I started praying for sick people, I saw less people getting ill. Now I see more people getting ill. Why is it? It's not because God wants to heal more people now. He always wants to heal people. The difference is, is that the influence of this kingdom, my mind has been renewed, so it doesn't influence me that easily anymore. I because I continue to hear the word, it's easily, more easy to remember who I am. And it's, I hear I can reign, so I can actually do something about it. Um, so I can speak a word, or I can pray. I don't have to accept what my circumstances is. A small example, I think all of you know now that I'm pregnant, but um, I think it's two weeks ago, we were away with Irma and the Indrak. So, so I'm feeling nauseous, like pregnant women do, and um, I never thought to ask God that I could feel better. So that Thursday night, I'm thinking, just before I went to bed, I said to him, just, you know, the nausea, it, can, it would be nice if that can just be better. So I wake up Friday morning, and that whole weekend, I felt nothing. I could eat, drink everything I wanted to. It was wonderful. <laughs> and um, it has affected me a bit here and there. But since then, I've been feeling, and I'm still in that, that time, I should actually be at my worst now. <laughs> so they, they say, you know. But I'm, I'm feeling good. So I'm just thinking that I can ask God. I, I can ask God. So. Even though you do not always see 100% results, just remember who you are. You are the beloved. You are not part of that kingdom of darkness. You are into, in a kingdom, new ways, renewed mind. Okay. Um, Okay, let's just quickly go on. 
let's start getting to an end. Let's go to Revelation 21. I just want to give you a few examples before we read again. So I went to Matthew and read a few of the parables of the kingdom. I said to God, because he says, the kingdom of God is like, and then he gives a little parable. So there's just a few I want to show you. Okay, so um, in Matthew 22, there was a, uh, the parable of a king who invited people to his feast. And I was just, so I was just taking a, um, like one principle from any, every, every parable. I'm not going to discuss them in detail. And I was just thinking how wonderful it is. Psalm 23, he decks a table in the presence of my enemies. Here, I have to accept my enemy, fight my enemy, and just be okay with what happens to me. Here, Jesus says, he decks a table in the presence of my enemy, and my cup runs over, and I can eat, I can feast, okay, when I'm sitting with him. So I saw that in the parable. Then there was Matthew 13 that he read in the finances, the sower. So I was also thinking, the what is this kingdom based on? It's the word. Okay, so here you, you gain by doing. Here you, you hear the word just, just by hearing. How simple is that? You come today, you are changed just because you came to here. How simple is that? Here you have to, to follow 10 steps. Self-motivation. By Tuesday you are so tired of changing yourself, you're thinking, Maybe on Sunday we can try again, or oh, I don't know, maybe after the holiday. Let's start 1 January. That's a very good one. What are the new year's resolutions? New year's resolutions. This year. This kingdom. You come on 18 December and you are changed even at the end of the year. Can you imagine that? Your new year's resolutions you forgot in February and you are still changed. That was awesome. Then, Matthew 18, he says the kingdom of God or for those who are be become like children. So here you have to be strong and brave and stand up for yourself and prove yourself. Here, the kingdom is for children. So those who become dependent on God, who is not strong, who don't know what goes for what, who make mistakes all the time, who make messes all the time. And he says, the kingdom are for those. But then he also says, for those who are humble. Okay. So um, you need to receive help then. That is humility, is to receive the grace of God. A child, um, I saw now our friends visited us, and she's about two years old. self done want to do it myself, and I want it my way. Okay. If you do not receive the help from your mother or father, then you're going to struggle here in the kingdom. So when you are humble and you receive the grace from God, though you are a child, just receive. That's the point, is that you need to become more like a child. Not receive the grace to become strong. Receive the grace so that you can learn to receive more grace, to become fully dependent on God. Then there was um, Matthew 18, another one. I cannot remember the, the parable, but the principle was forgiveness. So here you have to be punished for what you do wrong. This side, you receive forgiveness from God. And then salvation, he said, the kingdom of God is like one who goes out in a little boat and throws his net out and catches the fish. So the kingdom of God will always be salvation. God's heart will always be salvation for you. He will always throw you the life boy. You will, you will always have the opportunity to reach out. He's there for you. Okay. And then salvation for the lost as well. Um, and then there was one more. Matthew 20. I'm just going to elaborate quickly on that. Um, a guy, he said the kingdom of God is like this. There's a guy, he gives work to people. So in the morning at 8 o'clock, there comes people and he says, I'm going to give you $10 for today's, it's my translation, for today's work. So they said, $10 is good. Then later in the day, yeah, at 3 o'clock, there's some people here, yeah, the street corner, standing around, comes by saying, 
So why aren't you working for anyone? They say, well, nobody came to hire us. He says, well, come and work for me. Um, and they get on the bucky and they help with the painting of the house and gardening. And then at four o'clock, he calls everybody together and he gives everybody $10. Now these guys who came at eight o'clock, very indignant. Why do they also get $10? And God said, what is that to you? I can give them what I want to give them. And that is the way of grace, is that sometimes you've, you've, you've missed out so much. <laughs> you, you've not heard a word that can help you. You have not had the opportunity to pray for people. You have your circumstances, it's just constantly against you. So everything goes wrong. And then there's the other person, it's just blessing upon blessing. It always just looks like everything is right for them. But grace restores both. Okay? And what I mean with restore is, put them in a place of who Jesus is. If you really think of who Jesus fully is and what, he, what our full inheritance is, both is lacking. You understand what I mean? So both need to turn to Jesus. The one who had nothing and could stand on nothing and lost everything need to turn to Jesus, receive his grace and be transformed. The one who had an easygoing life need to turn to Jesus and receive his grace and be transformed. Okay? So the way of grace is, is that both is restored, doesn't matter what what is lost so that's the way of the kingdom okay so let's just quickly then go to revelations 21 When I was thinking of the, the kingdom, I'm not going to read those scriptures, but I was just thinking of, of other things the Bible says also. It says, now that you, you are citizens, you have been far, but has been brought near by the gospel, and you became citizens of a new kingdom. And he also speaks of you as you are a city, set on a hill, a lie that cannot be hidden. And that is what Revelation 21 is about, is that um, we are a new city. Okay, so we are the light of the world. So I want you to... I'm just going to read, and I just want you to see this picture of, um, of you being a light, of you being the city in this new kingdom. Let's from verse 1, we're going to start there. Then I saw a new sky and a new earth, for the former sky and the former earth have passed away, and they no longer existed in his sea. And I saw the holy city, and that's now you, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, all arrayed like a bride, beautiful and adorned for her husband. Okay, so that is how you look. You are beautiful. You're already married to him if you believe in Jesus. Adorned. Then I heard a mighty voice from the throne, and I perceived it distinct words, saying, See, the abode of God is with men, and he will live among them, and they shall be his people, and God shall personally be with them and be their God. God will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be anguish, nor grief, nor pain any more, for the old conditions and the former order of things have passed away. And he was seated on the throne, and he said, See, I am make all things new. Also he said, record this for the sayings of, um, of faithful and true. Um, and he further said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I myself will give water with out price from the fountain springs of the water of life. He who is Victoria shall inherit all these things, and I will be God to him, and he shall be my son. Yes, this is wonderful. Let's skip a bit. Verse 10. Then in the spirit he conveyed me away of, um, to a vast and holy lofty mountain, mountain and exhibited to me the holy city of Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. So that's now you. Clothed in God's glory. 
The luster of it resembled a rare and most precious jewel, like jasper shining clear as crystal. It had a, had a massive and high wall with 12 gates, and at the gates the 12 angels, and on the gates the names of the 12 tribes of the son of Israel were written. On the east side three gates, on the north side three gates, on the south side three gates, and on the west side three gates. gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he who spoke to me had a golden measuring rod to measure the city and its gates and its walls. The city lies in a square, its length being the same as its width, and it measured the city with its reed um, about 1,500 miles. Its length and width and height are the same. So he's just speaking about the perfection of the city. And those foundations is the word of God, okay, um, that we've been built on. And Okay, so let's go to verse 18. The wall was built of jasper, while the city itself was of pure gold, clear and transparent like glass. That's you. The foundation stones of the wall of the city were ornamented with all the precious stones. I was just thinking of the preciousness of the word. So that first foundation st stone was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, or white ag agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth Onyx, the six sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh j jasons, the twelfth amethyst. I don't know what all the stones mean. I'm I'm sure they there will be many meanings, but that is just the preciousness of the word that is built in into you. And the twelve gates were twelve poles. Um, with 12 pearls, each separate gate being built of one solid pearl. And the main street of the city was of gold, a spear, and the translucent as glass. Jesus is the way, okay? You are in the way. Him inside you, you are pure gold. Him inside you, he is pure gold. And I saw no temple in the city for the Lord God um, omnipotent and the Lamb himself or its temple. And the city had no need of the sun nor of the moon to give light to it for the splendor and the radiance, the glory of God illuminates it and the Lamb is its lamp. The nation shall walk by its light and the rulers and leaders of the earth shall bring into it their glory and its gate shall never be closed by day and there shall be no night there. They shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it, but nothing that defiles or profanes or is unwashed shall ever enter it, nor anything who commits abominations or practices falsehood, but only those whose names are recorded in the Lamb's book of life. Then he showed me the river and whose waters give life, sparkling like crystal. This is now in the kingdom, flowing out from the throne of God and the Lamb. Through the middle of the broadway of the city, also on either side of the river was a tree of life, with its twelve varieties of fruit, yielding each month its fresh crop. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and the restoration of the nations. There shall no longer exist there anything that is accursed. But the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall worship him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads, and there shall be no more night. They have no need for lamp light or sunlight, for the Lord God will illuminate them and be the light, and they shall reign as kings forever and ever through the eternities of the eternities. So this was just for me such a beautiful, beautiful picture of this kingdom. Um, it is gold. It is pure, it is holy, it is precious. There is no darkness in this kingdom. Um, love is the main thing <laughs> that operates in this kingdom. So these things of wiping away every tear, death shall be no more. As we are being transformed into his likeness, the transference has already happened. We are not part of the kingdom of darkness anymore. We are part of the kingdom of light, of the son of his love. But as our minds are renewed, <laughs> that kingdom can ha does not have an effect on you anymore. But these things that he described you, that hope of seeing that, as you look unto Jesus, you are renewed into his image. And that glory, that hope of glory that is inside of us is shown. So... Just to end off, um, 
Matthew 6 verse 33 says, Seek his kingdom, and all these things will be given unto you. In this place, you seek the riches of the world. You seek to be um, honored by people. You know, you seek things because you, sometimes it's actually, it needs, it's, you know, people need to recognize you. So I'm not saying it's wrong. But in this world, there's, you are seeking for whatever. <laughs> in this world, we seek the kingdom. We, we, we mind the things of the kingdom. We mind forgiveness. We mind love. And I was just thinking of faith and love and 1 Corinthians 13. And I was just thinking, you know, 1 Corinthians 13 speaks about love. Love is um, patient. It is kind. It's not boastful. It keeps no record of wrong. And um, I was just thinking, first of all, that is who God is. But when I take an action of faith, sometimes that action is, for example, towards Gareth. Let's say I feel angry towards him. My action of faith, my showing of love, would be to forgive him and to go to him and give him a hug, for example. That is choosing the way of the kingdom. This way, I insist because I'm right. Okay. What is the end result of that? It's just, it's striving, it is... Um, division. The way of love, when we choose to act by faith, when we choose this way, the way of love is to, to, to unite. So, I don't think this was anything new to your ears necessarily, but it was just for me, I just saw a new picture of the kingdom and just realized that I don't have to think like this. I can think of the way of the kingdom. So that's the word. Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you that you are with us. Thank you that you have bought us with a price and that we no longer belong to this world, that we belong to you. And we pray even today, Lord Jesus, um, I believe that our minds have been renewed and I pray that um, continue that you will speak to us, that you will speak words of life to us in this week just to come time with family and friends and all the festive activities, that we will experience your love, that we will see the ways of the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I think I can say, oh, do you want to greet the people? Okay. Bye, YouTube, Facebook. Bye. <laughs>